Oliver, Ali, thank you for taking the time to be with me here today. Thank you for coming to uh, Bali. This, um, is, this is not a this is not around the block trip. This is a big trip. <laughs> it's definitely an adventure to be out here. Um, and we're we're currently at your spot. I'd love if you could tell the audience where we are. So we are in a little village outside of uh, Ubud, Bali, and this is called uh, Pijang or Lap Lapan. Okay. And it's just a little slice of heaven out here in the rice fields. I rented some land for 10 years with the intention of building a sensory deprivation center, float okay. center. Uh, but the real aspect of it is to incorporate nature with the floats. Yeah, so each float room has a uh, like individualized personal garden. Mm -hmm. So after getting out of the tank and you're all sensitive, instead of getting on the scooter and rushing back into traffic and you know, like most most float centers, yeah, I hate to say, I mean, as, as great a technology as it is, they're in float uh, little strip malls or, you know, right, right. places, so quite sterile. We wanted to make it more of a natural experience, yeah, and so we're just building. So I'm living here at the moment as the process is underway, and eventually we'll have a, maybe this will be a sauna, maybe there'll be a pool there, a hot plunge, cold plunge, it'll be the whole, whole healing little sanctuary. Do you have a name for it yet, or are you still thinking The about Float it? Garden. The Float Garden. Mm -hmm. I like that, and, and it's true, when I think of sensory deprivation tank, at least the locations, very much in like these little strip malls. These yeah, little, little iPhone stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so how did you kind of come up with this idea of, of starting a sensory deprivation tank center? Well, I'm, center? I'm glad you're asking me this. Uh, I think I was about your age, 28. And like I was told you, 28 is a pretty profound year in the cycles of, of life. Um, and I went into a float tank in San Diego, and this was when floating was not as it is now. Like, it's pretty well known. A lot of people know. Maybe the listeners already know. Maybe they don't. They can Google it. But uh, there was only one tank center in San Diego, and it actually was in the town that I was living in, Pacific Beach. And it was just this guy who had a float tank. Right. And he allowed you to come into it. Um, you know, it was like $30 an hour, which is very inexpensive compared to the prices now. And I w went into it with a friend of mine. And it was only one tank, so he would wait. And then, and then I would go, and then I would wait for him. And so and then we left. And I remember having this experience, and it was just the most... It was like the simplest, most profound, and un unexplainable message that I got at this time and it said move out of your house right and I'm it's 28 and I'm like what does that mean what does it mean to move why move out of my house like I'm thinking very surface layer you know like uh -huh. buy a different house move to a different neighborhood you know whatever it is whatever that was I I didn't listen to it for about a year and then I listened to it and I got out of this house that I was living in in Pacific Beach and I had the greatest life ever you know I could skateboard to, to my other I had a little business down there too I knew everybody you know we drank every day we just go to the bars you know there was plenty of girls and there was you know it was a great place to be you know right on the beach and um, needless to say I moved out of the house and uh, honestly like that was it that was the big trigger I was held to this house that I had bought when I was young, mm -hmm. 21, when I first played on the Ironman. Okay. And, uh, or not the first time, second time. And I was bound to it, you know? I was gonna live the rest of my life in this little this little town. It was a great life, don't get me wrong. Right, right. But now, being 35, looking back at it, I mean, man, that was the most powerful message ever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and, and look where I am now. You know, and if I hadn't listened to that message, I could still be there. I could could be having a great life, but I, I will say, the lessons that I've learned the past, um, you know, six six seven years, I mean, huge ones. Yeah, right. and they're just and they're even they're coming even faster now. Well, what's what's interesting is that a lot of people listening to this might be fans of of you as a paintball player, right? Um, you are known as some people say the greatest paintball player ever, and your experience there. Um, the, the team with the dynasty and what you've accomplished um, it's going to be it's history right uh, to see the progression of paintball from woods ball to uh, playing behind these inflatable bunkers you were part of that part of that and you champion that 
at the same time, here you are in Bali. Um, that life is, is behind you. And a lot of people are probably interested in that transition, um, in, that, in the, the perspective of you had it all, but you, you had this conscious understanding that maybe there was something else out there. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it's a good, good question, and I, and I love to share about it. Um, you know, there's really just, there's no, you, you're not in control of life. And uh, the more you realize that, the better you, the better off you are. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm trying to control everything in life, then you know, really, I, I get so affected by things when they don't go my way, pretty much. And um, I was in a place at the right time for this paintball thing to spawn and to do what we did. Right. And you know, that'll never be done again. You know, it was like the. Um, it was like the Dong Tata Z Boys guys, you know, like they were at the, the, the spark and the epicenter of where skateboarding was taking off. Right. And then now they are where they are now. And we were the same thing for PayPal. So, but with that being said, you know, it's like I've always been fascinated with, with human achievement and, you know, human growth and the possibilities that are. Uh, that are out there for any human being to achieve. And I knew when I was a young kid that I wanted to be the best paintball player. That's what I knew. I right. held that vision. I, I, I matched my practice and <clears throat> my life revolved around it. Yeah. And I achieved it. And I remember, you know, like in high school, people going, oh, where are you going to go to college? And I was like, I don't know. I didn't take the SAT. What are, what are the SATs? Yeah, yeah. College? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Where's college? I was just in Paris last weekend playing paintball, you know, and I made 500 bucks. Right. <laughs> and so it was like, it was a dream. And I was in the dream spell, and I rode that wave for as long as I could ride it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as you develop as a human being, you want to constantly be progressing, right? <laughs> you know, it's like... I was in the first grade, I went to the second grade, and then, I, you know, third grade, so on, so on, to middle school, high school, you know, and, and life opens up for you. So you're, we're, we should always be with an aim and a trajectory of some place that we want to go. And I think the problem with most people um, is they don't know where they want to go. And they also always then see, oh, look at Oliver Lang, he's a professional paintball player. I want to be, I want to do what he did. Right. The thing is, you're not going to do what I did. In fact, you can't do what I did because I did what I did and you have a unique um, purpose and goal too, you know? And so, again, you know, <laughs> to quote Jesus, he says, he says, um, you can do all that I did, but you can do it better, right. right? So that's like a beautiful thing. Like, don't live my life, you know, don't live anybody else's life. You gotta live your life. In fact, your life could actually be something way more profound than anything that I ever did or anybody else ever did. Right? So, um, you know, coming full circle, I, I left San Diego and I, I started leaving. Once I left the house and I started to explore more and more and more about myself and the inner journey and shit, it's just what's out there in the world, mm -hmm. there's something so riveting and uh, activating about that. You know, it's hard to go back. That's what travel, the beauty of travel is, is to be able to go outside and see what's going on in the world, collect the information, collect the data, and then yeah, maybe you have to go back for some time, but if that isn't pushing you to the next degree of yourself, then um, you know, you should really evaluate life because we want to be progressing. Right. So now, I mean, you know, this vision that's here was a vision that was in my mind uh, you know, three or four years ago and now it's like materializing, actualizing, and coming into manifestation, mm -hmm. which is, you know, this is the beauty of life. This is, I risked a lot to make this happen, you know? Of course. And not risk anything in a negative way. I risked it because it's what I needed to do. And so when you get more aligned with what you're doing in life, you know, not living somebody else's life or doing what your parents tell you to do or what society tells you to do, you start actually living. And then really, you, you can't go wrong. I think it's one of the most difficult things to, to do, and you personally, you you face those difficulties. Um, a lot of there was there was a lot of questioning and a lot of concern about like where where is Ali? Where did sure. he go? Um, and it's it's interesting too because 
you're on this you're on this search. You're you're going through this journey. You're discovering something new about about yourself. But at the same time, maybe your your family, your friends, the people that are closest to you, the people that you care about the the most, don't understand that. How did you deal with that? Well, it's still something that's a factor, you know.、Uh, and for everybody that's listening to this, this is a really important question, and, and you're going to have to face this if you are looking to to maximize your life.、Mm-hmm. You know, like. <clears throat> I don't hang out with the people that I hung out with in kindergarten, you know. <laughs> and then I hung out with different people in middle school, and then I hung out with different people in high school, and then I hung out with different people out of high school, you know. So I'm not bound to anybody. I, I love all my friends, and I love <clears throat> everything that I've ever done. In fact, a real friend is someone who is actually looking out for you, and actually someone who wants to meet you where you're going, right? Where are you、right. going after this trip? Right. Where are you going? I'm not sure. So say you're gonna go to Thailand,、yeah. right? We yeah, become yeah. friends. Are you going to Thailand on this day? Oh, dude, you, I'll just come and I'll meet you there, and we'll go do this together. We'll make this hike, you know. And I'm meeting you at the place that you are to propel you into the next phase of your trip or your life, right? Right. So most of the time, and by no means do I mean that any of my paintball friends do this or did this, but this is maybe why they think this is. You know they're worried about where I'm going because it's gonna it's gonna affect them. They、right? haven't seen it before either, and they haven't they haven't they haven't gone outside of their、uh, worlds. You know, and this is a big thing in life. You've got to go outside your world. So if you're into paintball or whatever it is that you're into, you know that's your world that you're living in. But if you really want to maximize it and be, become the best at it, you've got to start looking outside that world and looking into that world with a different pair of eyes. Because otherwise, you can just be in that world running on a hamster wheel until. Your whatever age, and then you've got a bitter taste in your mouth because this happened and that happened and that happened and that happened. Right. right, right. So it's always about having that a new perspective on it and having those new eyes. And after traveling for so many years, I thought I knew how to travel. I really thought I knew how to travel. <laughs> I mean, I was like a million miler by the age of like twenty-two or something.、Like、really、that. silly, yeah. And then. I thought I figured it all out. Oh yeah, this is how you do it. You come to the city, you go eat there, and you meet this person, and you go here, and blah 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 blah. And it wasn't until like literally, I I took that year off of retirement or、uh, leave of the year, and I said, okay, I'm just gonna keep traveling because I'd never done that before. Right.、And、I spent more time in one place, and I soaked that place up, and I and I I understood the place instead of just coming in with a a week or three days and saying, oh yeah. Paris, yeah, it's it's good. Or this place is bad. You Trip know? advisor says do Trip these things. Trip advisor says do this. You got to get into the place and you got to soak it up. You got to just seep yourself in it.、Mm-hmm. You got to seep. Right. You know. <laughs> you got to literally do it right. And you're doing it right. You come to Ubud. You stay here for a month. You can go to other places, but sit here and see what comes to you. Right.、Mm-hmm. It's like the it's like the spider. Right. The spider just sits on the web and sits there, and everything comes to it. Right. Right. And instead of chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing, and most people are always just chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing, so they never really get to fully experience things.、Um, talk to me a, a little bit about that year. There's been, I watched a couple podcast episodes where you talk about where you went, but I think what's more interesting is the the things you were trying, the practices that you were taking part in, because there's a reason that you became so good at paintball. You figured something out about how to be really good at one thing. Um, part of that's work ethic. Part of that is doing it so much it just becomes natural to you. But I don't, I haven't heard as much about when you took that year off. What were you doing? The practices you were trying. What were you What were you exploring、um, during that time? And also, why Why did so many people not know about it?、Mm. Well, it has to. I actually have to go back、um, a little bit of time before that because I was I got really activated. And what I mean by that is like, I was really able to look at myself and my life、um, again from a different perspective, right? And right. that was all when I started to take care of my health, right? Not that I was ever unhealthy. Let's just say you can't be as a professional paintball.、Pro. I mean, we you were. Most people are actually very unhealthy because、right. we we take in things, we consume things, and yeah, you could exercise and that can make you feel like you're healthier, right? But At the end of the day, like, what is health? 
this, this is a big question, you know? I mean, health is who you surround yourself with. Health is where you live. Health is what you eat, drink, and what you read, and what you see. You know, there's a big, vast understanding to what health is. So, when I started the journey, I started a health journey. And, and that means I'm consciously aware of what I'm intaking and what I'm eating, and, and obviously not drinking alcohol or doing any other things. And then that propels you into a different state of living, right? right. So then I can't, got to... I got to Bali and I, I had an intention of having doing a yoga teacher training with which is what most people do you know I, we're interested in it and I re, the whole yogic journey is a fascinating one that I highly recommend everybody getting in on and really understanding it because from a, a deeper level it's much more than posture if, if you if you if you've started that and, uh, and of course you know to understand meditation you have to be able to sit for a long time which means you have to be you have to be poised and you have to be, you know, strong enough to sit for this amount of time. So anyways, I ended up in Bali and I did a yoga teacher training and I met this girl and she was like, just such a sweetheart. And she said, I said, you know, she was asking me the questions, oh, what do you do, where are you from, blah, 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 blah. And she said, I said, oh, I'm from California, but I'm traveling here, but I got to go back and I got this paintball thing, but I, I don't know what to do because I've been doing it for a long time. and. She said, you just need a sabbatical. And I said, a sabbatical? I never even thought about that. And, she, and then she looked at me dead in the face. She's never, she doesn't even know me. She says, everybody needs a sabbatical, you know? You need a sabbatical. And I, that, that never even dawned on me, you know? And just to like, listen to somebody else giving you the, just allowance to say, potentially you can put your life on hold for a little bit and go and experience something that is, well, it's unknown, and then see what you get from it. So that year started that, and at the same time, actually, it was just a ripple effect. Yeah, I, my business partner said, hey, we need to sell the business. So I said, well, I was really, you know, my ego was very attached to that, and right. I said, okay, well, you know, what are we gonna do? And ended up giving me a little bit of money, so now I had money, now I wasn't playing paintball, and then all of a sudden, the house that I was living in, my friend said, uh, we're, you know, I'm not going to live in this house anymore. I said, well, great. Well, I, do I need to come home and move, move my stuff? He says, no, no, we'll just put it in the storage for you. Everything's just... So everything kind of like aligned really quickly, yeah. Right. And that's just moving into that space of grace. It's a tr it's interesting. Um, I love learning about people in transition. Ironically, we're always in transition, right? But people that are going from a period of like one job or one thing to another. And you often hear about, this person said something to me or... Like you, you're, you said this person, they said it was okay. Like they gave me permission. Totally. That's why, a big one in life. Yeah. Why, why do you need permission from somebody else? Right? Like most of the time we're just so afraid to live and, uh, it's just the truth. We're afraid to live, you know? And so when somebody gives you a little bit of, um, support and stability and permission to do something like that, you realize that, well, oh, I can do that, yeah? And so many people, and you know, you just quit your job and you're now traveling around the world, like, what was the, what was the, the, um, that breaking point, you know, where you gave yourself permission to say, okay, I'm actually going to do this, you know? Yeah, someone actually was, was telling me after having multiple conversations with me, you need to do it, you need to do it. See, there you and go. I would, I was giving the excuses, he was, he wouldn't put up with it. It was a good, good friend of mine. Like, we're said super that. good at giving excuses. You yeah, know, we're super good at filling our, our our world with reasons why we can't do something, and that's a big that's a big human flaw, you know. And that goes with everything, you know. There's so many people out here that are maybe that are listening that are want to be a pro paintball player, want to be whatever it is, right. and they give themselves a million excuses why they can't reach those levels, you know. It's like remember earlier I said to you, you said oh, I'm trying to do this. And I said no, don't try, just do it yeah. because. Trying is just another one of those little subconscious setbacks that, oh, I'm trying my best. But really, what is your best? You know, your best is when you give it your all and you go right. do it. And sometimes you need a little bit of permission to allow yourself to do that. You know, especially if you're coming from the West, mm -hmm. you know, where there's a very conditioned and controlled mindset. Um, talk to me a little bit about this practice of effortlessness, this practice of just doing, letting, letting things come to you. Because I've started to practice that. Um, you have this idea of perfection and then you don't actually do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, well, if, you're, if your best is at 70% right now, you better do that 70% so that you can get to 72. 
And that's kind of been my mind state now, um, even as starting the podcast. The first podcast that I did is not going to be as good as this one. I'm just getting better at the art of conversation. I'm, I'm learning and proving. Um, but I'm doing so, I'm trying to do so effortlessly. I'm just letting things kind of come as, as they do. And I think it might apply to people that are watching this that are trying to get better at, at paintball as well. Well, um, you have to really understand the law of least uh, effort, right? And so what does that mean? You know, it's like you look at a Picasso painting and, you know, he could paint a Picasso, he could paint a painting um, in, in minutes, you know, he painted he painted hundreds of paintings in his life, or thousands of paintings in his lifetime. He probably painted numerous paintings a day, right? Right. But it took him 20 years of practice to, to be able to get a good clean stroke so that it was it, it fulfilled the identity of a face or an arm or leg you know with a quick amount of or with a little effort right so there is effort in the least effort you understand so you have to know the basics you have to know the, the mechanics of things right like you're not just gonna jump into any sport and master it right away no matter if, if you're a genius or not you know there's still mechanics involved so the art of conversation there's mechanics involved in it and you're only going to get better at it the more you do it right. same thing you're going to get better at it the more you play paintball so you can't it's a it's a it's really difficult to understand this sort of thing but the 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 law of least effort or trying or doing or not doing comes with a lot of doing right but so, i think taking the ego out of it as well right mm, it's more uh, no, the ego st was still there. It's still there. You know, there's a lot of players that play amazing ball, paintball, or f football, or basketball, or whatever it is, right. and they've got huge egos. The difference is, is that once you can take the ego out of it, then you really go to a fully heightened new level of your being, which is in insanity, which is what can be achieved. You know, right. and that's kind of more what I'm moving into now, realizing that. You know, paintball was only a learning process for me to get to the next level of my being, right? So we're always, again, we're always con gradually climbing these new heights of ourselves. So you might need to, like I skateboarded before I played paintball, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I ended that when I started playing paintball. But if I kept skateboarding, then I would have never have done paintball. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you use these, you use everything in your life that you've ever been given. And this is like an incredibly beautiful teaching. Everything that you've ever done in your life, you need to put into this very moment right now, right? So if you can comprehend that and be aware of that, that you can learn how to ride a bike when you're five years old and then you can uh, articulate that performance into a conversation or into building a float center or to whatever it is, right. right? You can utilize that learning ability right now, some way, somehow. And that that's why your whole life is this compiled, uh, compiled amount of experiences that you've been having to achieve where you are right now but are you smart enough are you brave enough uh, are you you know pretty much you know ready to go into something that's unknown and new to you because most people aren't and so dropping the paintball has only allowed me to raise to become a greater version of myself on many aspects um, talk to me a little bit about focus because for, for me, uh, I have, I'm very interested in the podcast, right? I, I always have these interests, these multiple interests. Mm -hmm. And your path, uh, while you've tried different things, it's been very singular, meaning when you were playing paintball, you were only paying, playing paintball. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that, maybe for, because a lot of people, they might be wanting to get good at paintball, but they're spending, they have these different interests, they have these different passions. How do you stay focused? How do you stay focused on one thing? Well, again, you know, when you have a real passion, it's about, it's inside of you that's driving you to do it. So a real passion takes control. Like, for instance, I want to paint, right? I want right. to paint paintings. And I see it as, it's a passion that's within me, right? Now, if I, if I didn't have that like if I just wanted to paint paintings so that I could sell paintings for a large amount of money, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't really have that passion, right? So the passion gets a little tainted. So when you actually are truly passionate about something, you just do it. So if you're not, it's and it's totally okay. Like you got to realize that. Like you can, 
want to play paintball and have the passion and say, oh, I want to succeed like that guy did and I want to be like them, like that's totally cool. But if you have all these other ones and then you're not really, it's not a real honest passion about it, it'll just end up falling away. But that's okay. That's okay because again, it's part of the process, you know? So focus is this, um, you know, it's just this will to do it, you know? You right. just do it. It's not, there's nothing too complicated about it, you know? like. Any of the best of the best of the best, they just do it. They just did. They just do it. And they did and a it, lot of it. And if you're not <laughs> feeling, if you're not feeling it to do it, then move on to something else. You know, and that's totally okay. Like people need to realize that. And if you can't be honest with yourself, I mean, if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest with anybody. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. You know, and it's until you take that, uh, that, that oath to yourself to become honest to yourself. Uh, does your life stay in one one way? So what, once you take that oath, you move on, and you become okay. This is what I'm doing, and then you do it. I think it's like you answer to your intuition. I, just, I believe so strongly in the intuition. I believe so strongly because I've started. I don't want to say like premonitions, but there's certain things that I do. It feels good. There's certain things that I do. It doesn't feel good, and I'm trying to go into more of the good. Beautiful. And it's you know even like continuing to work that job. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like I'm. It's the thing that I'm most in love with or most passionate about. But the external is like, well, great salary, and if you do this for this much, and for, and you have these like external, um, yeah, thoughts that in many cases are not even your own thoughts. They're kind of like programmed or part of like what society is told to. Totally, and that's super beautiful that you can actually be in touch with your intuition enough to feel something, you know, I, I, I really, it's really sad, but you know, most people don't feel anything anymore. And if, when you don't feel anything anymore, you're living in, well, pretty much you're living in a, a state of, of lack and fear, you know, because you're just, uh, you know, you're just doing something to do something. You right, know? right, right. Like you're, oh, I got to have the job, so I got to have the 401k and I got to do this because, you know, this is what we're told to do. The minute you can start to feel things and start to be intuitive, I mean, intuition is a is you know what they call the sixth sense, you know. And how do you how do you grow your intuition? You know, it's, it's through cultivating within yourself. So how do you grow this intuition that's part of you? That's an innate part of you, you know. Like how many times has intuition just popped up and happened? And oh, there's a chance meeting, and now oh, there we are. But you you brush it off. Right. Most people right, brush it off. Right. And. The intuition's a real deal, and it's a real sense. And once you can move into that intuition and start listening and feeling, then you're again you're catapulting yourself into a higher dimension of yourself. I think that's a good transition to talk about some specific practices that people listening to this that are into paintball, keep other people listening to this might be able to, to benefit from um, that you do. So I'd love to hear maybe about the floats, but uh, the meditations you're doing, the yoga, like maybe your your daily lifestyle because we were i don't know if you were talking about it in the podcast or before we were talking about your life is everything like health is everything health is not just the gym for 45 minutes it's everything you consume so i'd love to hear about how you've kind of designed your life to optimize for that and the practices well you know i i got tattooed on my hand practice okay right uh, and i did that a couple years ago when i was starting to get pretty activated again and i have you know, to me, this meant like, okay, like we did a lot of sacrifice as kids to play paintball. You know, like it might not look like that, but if you look at every great athlete in the world has sacrificed a lot to become wherever they are, you know? People don't realize that. People don't realize the sacrifice in practice. And in fact, people are turned off by the word sacrifice, you know? and. If you get more into understanding practice and what sacrifice really means, it's really beautiful and discipline, really beautiful, you know. So like I always held this this continuity within my practice within paintball. Like you know, there there was very seldom days that I did I just never showed up to the field. You know? Right. It would it would like there had to have been a catastrophic instance, you know, like really. But I don't really think I ever did it. You know, I really showed up to the field every weekend for at least 10 years, you know? Maybe once I started getting a little bit older. I, I do remember when I got a little bit older and I was living where I was living in by, in, by the beach, I remember like, oh, I, I think what happened was we missed an event, or no, 
we missed the Sunday round in the San Diego event, and I was in San Diego on Sunday, and it was like the first time that I had not had it be, be at the paintball field. Right, right, right. And I remember looking around going, oh my God, like there's a lot of people out on Sunday. Like, <laughs> Sunday is like a big day, you know? Yeah. Like most people are working every day. And I had this like huge epiphany, I'm like, well, Sunday. So I really felt like I was missing out a little bit at that point. And then I, you know, that was when things started to kind of slow down a little bit. And, you know, we took weekends off and whatnot, have you. So, but before that, it was every weekend for so many years. And that's just like every, every great, athlete or artist or writer you know they put in the time and the effort into it so uh you know like really practice makes perfect and then on top of that perfect practice makes perfect you know mm -hmm. and i see that that's where many people are lacking in their life they're, ma they're lacking commitment they're lacking discipline they're lacking the, the art of practice you know right and even now like i'm moving into a place like see what people don't realize is that, you know, I retired from paintball, but I don't have any money. You know, it's not like I made millions of dollars playing paintball. Yeah. So now it's time to work, right? So now I'm realizing that the secret's in the work, right? Like that's the fulfillment is the work. And so what does that work mean? There's, there's, a, there's a huge capacity of different things that I can do to make money. And the work is the beauty of it. And essentially I'm moving into a more of a space of trying to be less selfish and more selfless and so the work is part of developing myself is also develop, developing other people so how can I you know do this and so I'm moving more into like really where I want to work is I want to be doing personal development I want to be doing coaching and, and such like this on a personal level right. not necessarily paintball everybody can do that. anybody can teach you how to play paintball you know like I'm more into now the practice of becoming the most amazing person right and so when you start on any sort of martial art, yoga, um, you know, tai chi, whatever it is, mm -hmm. jujitsu, you know, there's a discipline, paintball, there's a discipline in the practice that teaches you how to show up, right. how to be, how to have camaraderie, how to be, you know, not fearless, but, but brave. And so, but what's the point of going and showing up and being all these great benevolent things at the paintball field and winning tournaments, but then I go home and then I beat my wife, or I, you know, right. drink myself to death, or right. crash my car and kill somebody, right? So, I had this like big revelation when I started moving into the practices of the yogic realm, and and don't get me wrong, like I'm not a I'm not a yogi like you would think I am, you know, like right. I don't sit here and practice three hours of yoga asana every day, you know, I don't, um, but I live the yogic path. Right? Mm -hmm. And the yogic path is a beautiful one. And if you actually ever take the time to investigate into the path of the yogi, I mean, it's incredible. Like, an amazing, amazing, amazing depths. It's much more than a surface layer uh, yoga studio posture with tight pants and a yoga mat. Right? Right. So this is what people need to learn. They need to move. They need to go into it, see it for what it is, and then they take it, and then they go on their own journey with it. So my practices now are quite simple, you know? Like, my practice is about taking this tattoo into everyday life. Right. And how can I bring joy? And how can I bring light? How can I bring comfort and security? How can I be everybody's best friend? And not in a way that that drains my energy, but in a way that it fills me up my energy, right? Right, right. You know? And the more that I can practice on myself, which is throughout all these different practices. I mean, I've done, I've done a gambit of it all, you know, because- You I, tried them all. I tried it all because I looked and I looked and I looked and I realized that practice is a sur not a surface layer thing of going to the paintball field one weekend. Just like being a good Christian or being a good, um, any religion isn't going to church one day a week. You know, right. it's being it, it's embodying it, it's being a godly person throughout your life all day long and being aware of all the the negative things that are coming at you all the time and being able to de deflect them and block them uh, swiftly and to proceed on you know gracefully and elegantly in life so that's what I'm into you know I mean my main practice practice now is uh, you know I don't think people are ready for it but it's 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 just to breathe right yeah you know I mean when you when you breathe you control the quality of your mind. And when you control your mind, you control your life. You know, I want to be in control of my life. I want to be in control of this, um, this physical meat vessel body thing that 
it has been taking me to where I am now. And I didn't know any of this. You know, I was literally living in uh, in a whirlwind, tornado, fast-paced lifestyle paintball right, right. was giving me, and it was awesome, like awesome. <laughs> but now that I can step away from it and I can slow down and I can see things for what they are and I can have this aha moment that realizes why I needed to do that to get to where I am today. And that's everybody, you know, whether you're, the thing is we don't, we don't ever give ourselves the, the credit that's due, you know? So like you do something for a long time, you should realize that you did that thing for a certain growth factor for a certain purpose mm -hmm. and then you then you let it go and most people can't let go of things you know so I got to the point where if I wanted to advance in my life I needed to let go of something right. and, and most people say when you you know you let go of something that you love you learn the most from so what not better to let go of something that was like my baby that was my uh, you know it was my life and, and I don't let it go to like go into the gutter. I so let it there. go, I give it up. No, yeah, I give it yeah. up. I give it up to a better cause to see what's going on. And I can look at it from a different perspective and a different angle and say, okay, great. And I know when the, it, it, there's gonna be a time where I come back, I don't know whether to play or whether to work with, I don't know what it is exactly, but there's gonna be a moment of that, you know? Uh, and so it's given me that perspective. And I mean, you know, we're only a, you know, we're only a full, uh, Full, um, you know, a, a full amount of experiences in our life that have brought us to this one perspective, and when you can step out of that again, you can really see things with a new, new light. Well, I think the interesting thing is it's giving you the opportunity to build an audience to have people that look up to you, that are inspired by you. Well, that's and you I know that's part of that, it. and yeah, exactly. You know, I know that I'm not supposed to be all relaying the paintball star whatever even that means you know it's like we're not I'm not a star I'm just a human being you know and everybody's a human being whether you're a famous actor or you're we're just all human you know the difference is is can can we bring that stardom into the real world like that's the ticket that's what I'm really all about like how can I take everything that I've accumulated in my lifetime into the real world because mm -hmm. it just doesn't make any sense to me to be the greatest actor or the greatest um, athlete and then just go home and piss it away and be yeah. angry and be sad and be depressed and right. you know what do whatever harm to myself or to others right so I believe that we're in the in the time and era in the world uh, where we can be as great as we can be like really we have the capacity now you can grab an iPhone you can be the most amazing photographer mm -hmm. you can grab uh, you can have your website you can have a blog and you can write a book and you can you know you can make music on your phone you know everybody's in, uh, and now an electronic DJ or artist like we're, right. we're the, t with the technology we're building the platforms to become our greatest the difference is is when you get to your greatest bro what's next right <laughs> so most people and I've seen this firsthand not with nobody that I know but watching other great athletes because I know where they're at I know where they where exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah. How do they handle it? You know, there's two directions to go. There's one to go the right way, which is, you know, the path of selflessness and and becoming more of what I believe is your true self. Or do you go into the ego route, where you become more, 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 more? Give me more. I need yeah. more. And really, you know, what? Look at all the greatest. Look at all of them. Look at all the greatest musicians that are. Well, a lot of them are dead. A lot of them are alcoholics, a lot of them are drug addicts, a lot of them have bad relationships with their wife or their children, you know? And so, well, why, you know? To me, that doesn't make sense. You right. know how to be the greatest. You know how to be the greatest at whatever it is that you do, but then you go home and you're a bad father. Like, that doesn't yeah, make sense. the greatest father. Dude, there's so <laughs> many levels of, of great attributes that you can be. Right. And that's what I'm into, you know? And that's why I know, like, right now, this is, the, I'm in the right place, the right time, with everything is, is going perfectly. And not that it, if it doesn't go perfectly, I'm gonna be scattered because I've trained myself now to become ready for anything that comes my way and be okay with it. Right. You know, I'm actually, I'm, this is actually the definition of indestructible, you know? Like I'm getting to those points of becoming indestructible, you know? Because again, 
through the practices of meditation, of pranayama, of yoga, of reading, running, mm -hmm. writing. You know, like I know how to fortify myself. You know, and I understand now what's going on in the world. You know, I didn't know what was going on in the world before. I was in my little bubble. This is me. I go here. I go there, and I'm this. And let me sign your autograph, and let me do this, and right. let me just win this tournament, and then let me just go home, and then drink, and then meet random women, and you know, it's just like that's a you know that was a part of it, but that's not me. You know, right. that's not who I was. That's who I thought I was. You needed to take that full year. You couldn't just do a, a month. Like, it had to be a very deep transition. Well, like I told you, you know, like, I had traveled so much, but really, you don't, you don't, people, we don't know anything. Like, just to be humble enough to say you don't know anything is right. a beautiful thing, right? So, I thought that I knew how to travel. But then, realizing after spending four months in Bali, of sitting still and traveling around here, that, oh, wow, this is actually traveling. This is definitely. Taking time to live in another country and to soak it up and absorb it, that's traveling, right? right? You know, and, and some people might not ever have that opportunity, but again, I don't believe that. I believe you have the opportunity. If you want to go do it, you can figure you it out some way or another. It. Right. And it's beautiful. Sometimes you might have to sleep outside and under the rain and, you know, beg for food, but there's nothing more humbling than that, you know? And we're all afraid of being humbled. Right. Because our ego's in the way, and we, and we stand up to it, and we say, no, I, I deserve better than this. And, you know, man, I, I love sleeping outside. Like, honestly, the simple life is the real deal, you know? And the more people that are t getting tuned tuned in on this sort of stuff that we're talking about, you 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 know, like, you just put your better. life on hold, and you probably sold some things, and you got... I have a friend here, he unplugged his whole family from, from the... California Matrix lifestyle sold everything, you know, right. and they're they're having the time of their lives. They don't know what's gonna happen, you know. They're just enjoying life. They're they're taking it one day at a time, yeah. you know, and that's the way to do it. You yeah. know? And they're fresh. I seen, I saw them when they first arrived. You know, they looked they looked like you know they were a little stressed. Now they are like fully perky, colorful. <laughs> you know, they're really beautiful. And their kids are having the most best time of their lives. So, yeah, we just stand in our own way with a lot of things. Um, I'd love to hear about some some particularly interesting stories revolving around paintball that maybe you you haven't spoken about, or maybe you haven't shared before, or maybe just even things that that still come up, thoughts that that you still have a, about the sport. Well, it's such a peculiar sport, and in, in, in such a beautiful way. Like it's so unique. Like I mean it, it is. like I've been really dissecting it and dissecting it and dissecting it and dissecting it, and stripping it, and stripping it down, and stripping it down, and stripping it down to the the core of it. I mean honestly it's like I think it's the best sport in the world. I mean honestly, like nobody might understand that, but it's the most interesting sport in the world. It's like literally the most intense martial art you could ever do, you know? And you learn how to die. You learn how to die. You know? And that's a big one. Most of us are so afraid of dying. So you learn how to die and you learn how to live again. You learn how to how to fix things. You learn how to strategize. You learn how to like be a supreme warrior. Right? And the archetype of the warrior is really what I'm into because I know it. I I am a warrior, right? right? But what is the real warrior? Again, you know, we have this image of the warrior fighting or, you know, playing paintball, but the real warrior is the guy who sits here and who can be uh, extremely solid no matter what the circumstances are on the, outcome, on the outside. Right. That's a real warrior, you know? If you read the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is the warrior in the thing, and he's got to go and face all his whole entire uh, family and all these people that he learned from, and he's sitting there quivering and crying, and he doesn't want to face them. Uh -huh. And then uh, Krishna is like, no, you have to face them. You have to do the right action. So that's the real warrior. And it's not about killing anybody. That's just metaphorically speaking. You know, the, right. the, the, the human mind has now, we've, we've taken everything out of context. And it's beautiful when you can strip it down, strip it down, strip it down to what the context really is. So the context to me for paintball or anybody who ever has ever played paintball, you're a fucking warrior. Right. You know, excuse my language. But you're a warrior, man. You're a warrior and you're there to fight. 
you know and we go into this little arena and it's totally artificial and the referees are terrible they don't even understand the game you know i mean with all due respect you know it's it's a it's a it's the wild west you know right. everybody's cheating each other uh yeah the amount of cheating is crazy there's many <laughs> factors you know guns go down bad paint bad referees like everything is a factor so right. in order to really be able to like win is uh, like pretty pretty incredible you know like and that's why we put so much emphasis in on winning because we knew how difficult it was, you know? And like any team that wins, especially now, I go, you know, God bless them. Like, dude, it's hard to win a tournament. Like, you have to have so many things working for you in order to win. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, the team dynamic's a big one. But in reality, the dynasty's dynamic, it ain't the dynamic anymore, you know? Really? And, no, it's not, you know? It's like, you know, they probably don't want to hear this, people don't want to hear this, but, you know, the old guys need to go. The, they need to go. They, they need to leave. They need to leave just like I left. And they're probably sitting here going, oh, no, I, I can play another 10 years, you know? And it's like, it's not about that. It's about getting the next level of individuals into place so that when they do go, the team is still a winning team. Right. So it's a feeder circuit. It's they're a, still it's holding a, on a little bit. Maybe. Everybody's holding on. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot human of, nature. Exactly. Plus, you know, it's some, some of them get good paychecks. And, uh, you know... It, you know who wants to really work you know right. and so and it's a it's a dream it's a dream and honestly they'll figure it out when they figure it out but the difference is, is can you figure it out for yourself instead of allowing outside circumstances to figure it out for you and I saw it I watched it like when I was a young kid and I joined the Ironman I watched these younger guys on the team phase out these legendary players like and it was wrong like right. I watched it happen you know and so I learned from them. You know, I learned from the older guys what I mean. Because the younger guys will phase you out. Because you're younger, you're faster, you're smarter, you're playing more, you've got more dedication, you've got more heart, you've got more, you know, uh, youthfulness. And so I watched the older guys on the Ironman just get chopped. Like Marty Bush, chopped. Brian Benini, chopped. Shea Bissana, chopped. Like they would just push him out. And I'm like, wow, we're really, not, we're really killing these guys like, is there because really... like from an experience perspective in paintball it's kind of like you can get to you don't need to be doing it for 20 years the person it's like a marginal difference the person that's young and fast and quick can do it for three years and be better than the guy doing it for 17 no 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 there's there's definitely much more uh if you ask me there's intricacies and well no there's just much more benefit in a um uh, in a in a in a, uh, what's it, a veteran player right. like a veteran player is good like you can't you know you don't want to get rid of him right but the difference is, is if he's not holding his weight in the sense of he's not practicing or he's getting out of weight or he's you know all these different elements mm -hmm. then they're going to phase him out eventually but th honestly there's just a good way to do it on both ends right. so the veteran player has to see okay it's time to go and be okay with saying I'm ready to go like right. how come we're so hung up on saying I can't go I gotta keep playing I gotta keep playing I gotta keep playing no there's no it's doubt that, that there's that there's that there's amazing uh, fun in it right but it's just like there's a time for everything and right. so there's a time when you're gonna have to split up from your girlfriend there's a time where you're gonna have to leave your job there's gonna be a time where you have to retire from paintball there's gonna be a time there's just a time for everything can you see the time mm -hmm. and can you do it in a in a manner that is that is that is amicable for both sides right instead of allowing it instead of running and running and running and then breaking your knee and then sitting around on the bench and then trying to get in because right. the team dynamic is a sensitive dynamic a sensitive dynamic in the sense that like we're all feeding off each other and we all value each other and we all care about each other in the sense that we I want you to play because you're you're a, this guy and you've been playing for so long and I trust you right. but at the same time you as that guy have to say hey I trust you, dude. I trust you, kid. You should go play. Like, I've done it, you know? And and that comes with all sports, you know? It's not just paintball. The difference is there's a lot of money involved in other sports, and I think that's why there's people stick much. around. I mean, I remember um, when you when you went to Iron Man, I, like, you heard about your salary. You're like, what? Like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Me as a 17-year-old kid or however old I was at the time. But, like, mm -hmm. that, that amount of money compared to, to what some other athletes make, and it was still unheard of. You were like the only guy to to get like a contract in paintball, and it's still 
the amount is like what you would I make. Still, I still think it's the bigger, the biggest one still. Really? I don't think anybody is. Crazy. I mean, I don't know. Not that I care about that accolade, but yeah. it's, uh, you know, it just goes to show you that also we've plateaued in a certain degree within the sport of it. And so, again, I mean, it just always comes back to the evolution of it. Like, how can you, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in this. How can I leave this earth better than it was than the way that I got here? Right. So how can I leave a team better than the way, you know, it's just like, how can we do these things so that it benefits everybody? And mm -hmm. the hard things, you know, how can you be, can you be mature enough to realize this when the time is the time to do something, you know, it's uh, honestly, I could have played for another 10 years. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Right, There's right. no doubt about that. <laughs> and I probably would have only gotten better, you know, if I want to put my full heart into it. Mm -hmm. But also I'm, I'm real, I'm a realistic person in the sense that I understand what it takes to be at the top and I understand the sacrifice that that is. So am I willing to sacrifice that to stay at the top? Not right now, no. Right. So then why would I half-ass um, take a sp spot on the team and s and not put in that sacrifice to stay at the top, but then steal playing time from other people who are willing to put that sacrifice in? Right. right. So that's what it's about, and it's about grooming these next generations. I mean, again, this world is the great thing to look at. How can I make this earth a better earth mm -hmm. than it was when I first came into it? And that's by training the younger generations to take care of the earth so that when I do die, they continue on and it's prosperous, you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just the same thing with everything, you know? But people don't think like this. I hate to say it. No, I mean, they most people only care about themselves. And that's right. that simple, you know? It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. So, you know, and, and I'm glad that we're having this conversation because a lot of people don't know this, but you know, it's just like the paintball world is in my heart. Uh -huh. And it'll it'll always be there, you know. And all the people that I've ever inspired, you know, I'm here to inspire people. Like that's my job. And I'm, but again, why limit it only to paintball? Right. Why limit it only to winning paintball tournaments? Honestly, it doesn't get you anywhere in life. It does. It'll get you somewhere to the point. But really, again, how can we transcend that and go into something that's deeper and higher in life? You know, and higher ideals in being. You know, it's yeah. like you you found me through paintball. Yeah. So at one point or another, I inspired you right. to do something, right? Or right. to live a certain way, right? And then now you are where you are today because of that. Right. So what can I say? Maybe you'll listen to this one day and maybe you're not understanding some of the things that I'm saying. Right. But you might listen to this in three years or two years or five years or ten years and say, ah, ha. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. And then you go on to the next, the next degree of yourself, you know? That's why I love doing the podcast because it's like a, a moment in time. It's for a thought process and a conversation in a moment in time that you this, look back This on. time will never go, this, this will this it won't be e eternal until, right. until uh, I don't know, until we can't find this, the six scan disc to, uh, <laughs> to watch it anymore, you know? Um, let me ask you, do you have a favorite paintball game? Um, or like a paintball moment? You know, there's so many. It's just like one of those things like, you know, do you have a favorite lover? You know, it's like there's yeah, so many yeah, good ones, thing. you know? Right, right, right. So it's like the... I mean, I, it's like I remember the first time I ever really like sh shot somebody and saw this person get shot by like my paintball gun. It was like one of the first times I ever played, and it was like where was me, that? Me and Alex were in Mare Island, and we like crossed this little ravine, and we had the pump guns because I think that's the way to do it when you first start. Is get right, the pump yeah, gun. Yeah, the Phantoms. And uh, yeah, it was a. And I think it was a tracer, and so I, I just got behind this guy, and he was laying down. He was just like an old man, and I shot him, and I was like, whoa. That was interesting, you know? <laughs> and that like is burned into my brain, into my memory, and I remember exactly what that is. It, like if we went there today, I could say that's it. And it's not that that is like the most memorable point because there were so many highs, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing is, you know, we were really chasing a lot of highs. So my life now is about always being high, right? You know, like right. being high here with you, having conversation. Is this is like an equivalent to me and being able to share this information with people? This is like the equivalent to me of winning a tournament, you know? Like, and that's the way I, I'm living my life now, where I don't have to chase something that's unsustainable to be high. Right, right. Like paintball was a big chase, you know? Of Everything's course. a big chase. So, how can you get to the point to when the gecko uh, chirps, it, it's affirming what you're thinking? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> I'm glad that, yeah you start to notice these subtle nuances in life but so how can I live life every day like I've won the World Cup that's what I'm about 
Right. It sounds silly to some people. They no, might <laughs> they might be like, what the hell is he talking about? Because winning the World Cup is such a big deal. But man, waking up in the morning is such a big deal. Right. And, uh, let's be it's honest. A beautiful you know, time. I mean, hundred millions of people are going to not wake up tomorrow morning. You know. Hopefully, that we wake up. And if you do, you should be celebrating. Um. I have to say one of the things, like, I remember watching uh, when Dynasty, like, playing Russian Legion, and it's interesting, this kind of, like, America versus, versus totally Russian type right. vibe. Uh, what was that like? Because I remember, like, Fedorov was so good. He was so good, and that, and that team, so good. And watching those games, it was, it was like, you felt that kind of patriotism. Totally. Um, what was it like being there? What was it, what, what was it like, the crowds, like? Take me through some of some of that experience, because honestly, I don't know if there's any other uh, competitors with Dynasty that, in my mind, and I don't have as much context, but if you want to give me some, um, that it felt like as big of a thing as that competition. Yeah, I think that's like a, I think that's like a, I don't know why that is, but that's like a world um, rivalry, you know? Right. And I don't yeah. know, maybe the Russians are right. Like the more I'm starting to look into life, I'm realizing like a lot of things are backwards and don't make any sense. And maybe the Russians are right. Maybe they're the Maybe they're the right. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it take, that takes a lot for me to say because you know we were always against them, mm -hmm. and we were always um, their competitors. And man, they were good, and they were funded. You know, and they were beautiful. You know, like they really know how to play like some elegant paintball. Right. But they're they were also very shallow in the sense. You know, like they didn't have the same camaraderie that we had. You know, no. we had a lot of heart, and uh, you know they had heart too to a certain degree. I, I I don't take that away from them. I was in their hearts, but. You know, that's why we were always better than them. And, uh, you know, they, being in those games, like, I remember the first X-Ball event that we had in the world. It was like the USA versus Russia. Right. And it was like Bob Long built the team. And it was like a really good all-star team. You uh -huh. know, like, it was cool. Like, we played, with, you know, Chris Lasoya and, like, you know, Rich Telford, all these guys that, like, you know, you wanted to play with, but you never got to play with them. Right, right, right. And then, of course, they matched us up against the Russians' first game, and it was single, or it was double elimination, right? Uh -huh. And so, you know, if we lost to them, we'd have to go down this this whole loser's bracket, right? And that's how it works. So you, if you lose the, if it's single, a double elimination, and you lose one, then you go into the loser's bracket, and you right. have to really fight your way out right, of it. It's right, not right. easy, right? Right. Um, and this was the first X-Ball, and it was, like, at the Amateur Open, and you know, we had our we had our American flag jerseys, and it's it's fascinating now. Even thinking about going, looking back at it, it's like there was real patriotism, you know. And I don't even really believe in patriotism anymore, to tell you the truth. But tough, I do believe in the this like like the essence of what America holds is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like the but at the same time, we can't say, oh, we're American and you're Russian and we're better than you because we're American. It's not about that, you know. Real patriotism. Is like it, it, again, it's an inside job, you know. Be patriotic about you know the way you brush your teeth, you know. Be patriotic about the way you you know just love everything that's around you and be honored that you're in a in a place that you can be free and mm -hmm. then, and it's beautiful, you know. Like America is amazing, you know. But we can't put people down because we're American, and I do felt I do feel like there was something there, and I it, I was immature, you know. I was very immature, and we were better. You know, right. I was looking at it from that really, uh, that standpoint, you right. know, and we, we had to beat the Russians because they were Russian, you know, uh -huh. and then of course there's that whole stigma of, you know, the you know, Sputnik and all these things, you know, like I don't even know what happened, I was too young for it, and all I heard was what I had heard about it, and I don't even know anything about it, I just knew the Russians were bad, and Rocky, and you know, he had to yeah, fight yeah. him, and so anyways, that was there, and I don't know where that came from, but that was there. It's still there. Now, in those games, was like you know, it, it felt like the movie Rocky, totally. You know, like the crowd. Right. You know, the, it's interesting. Still like, watching I, that, but to be there. I never, I never really like, I never allowed the my exterior situations or surroundings to really affect me. You know, like, and still to this day, you know, it's like, if someone boos me, they boo me. Like whatever. I, I know where I stand. If someone flicks me off while I'm driving my scooter. I know where I stand, you know, right. like, I know who I am, and I've always been like that, and I've had that integrity that's within, yeah, and so, like, I don't, I don't even remember the crowds at any event, you know, no. I do remember sometimes crowds not liking us because they wanted to see the underdog win, you know, and there's, like, that's a strange psychology, I don't know why that is, and I think it's somewhat, like, 
I don't know. It's it's kind of sad if you ask me because why have the underdogs win? They don't practice as hard. They right. don't care as much. They, um, you know, I mean, it's, I, I guess sometimes in some sports there's going to be a situation where the underdog practices their ass off and they're building and they're growing, you know? Right, right. And so you, I can see that. But sometimes people just wanted to see us lose because they're tired of watching us win right. and they want a little bit of controversy. Right. But that's horrible. You know, why have controversy in life? If the best team is winning and they're practicing the hardest and they've got the most heart and they've got the most tact and care and, uh, you know, carry themselves well and professionally, have them win. Like, right. that's why I love the Patriots, man. They win all the time, you know? They're really, yeah. like, a good team. But they're really a good team. Of course. You know? Like, and they've got a great person behind them steering the steering the ship. And then you got these other guys that come up, and we just want to see the Patriots lose for some reason because we right. want to see this other team win. But come on, they're good, you know? Respect them for that. I respect them for that. So anyways, you know, we were pretty much evens with the Russians at that point, and they were... They were their own team, you know, like we were a built team. So we didn't have communication and these, all these like intuitive faculties that were part of the game, you know, right. like they did, they were the full team, right. you know, like they're the Russian team, but they're still the Russian team. Maybe they added a few guys. So they had an advantage, you know, for sure they had an advantage. And uh, that's why it was that much more fun to beat them, you know? And it was very triumphant in that sense, you know, because we, it was like we, it was like we built an American team, and the American team was actually really good and, and won. And, and back in those days, man, like X ball was long and hard. Right. I think we played like, I think you played unlimited points for like uh, twenty minute halves or like forty minute halves. Or like a game was like an hour and a half or something right. like that, an hour long. I, I can't even remember. It's so different these days. There was a lot. There was a lot of you know. You had to have ten guys. Or right. more, you know, because you had to have more guys to go in. So that was a that was a cool game, and that was a big, big honor. And that was a, I was at a young age at that point. I think Alex and I were on the team from Dynasty. Maybe I was on Ironman. So anyways, it's all good. Um, cool. Well, I, I want to ask a, like one one final question. I have a couple of fun questions to finish the podcast cool. with, but I want to ask one question not relative to to that, which is, um, you know, you were talking about paintball changing right this this idea that certain people it's like you know when you're at a time where you have to give something up you're at a time when you have to transition time to give up the gun right time to stop playing uh that could translate into sport as well like maybe paintball will never be that really big sport maybe like maybe there's a reason that it's not as big as snowboarding or other action sports um, I love to hear your your final thoughts or your ending thoughts on like where you where you see it going and where you hope to go and if there is alignment there. Well, you know, again, there's there's like, you know, you, people just don't want to believe this, but there's factors that are in charge of a lot of things that are way out of our realm and that are predetermined. You know, whether we want to believe that it's within our economy or society, mm -hmm. and and it trickles down into the industry of paintball whether it's industry of paintball or whether it's industry of football or basketball like people do things a certain way to get things done a certain way uh, whether we want to like that or not you know right. like there's people that are in control that's what I'm saying okay so without a doubt the industry hasn't grown because a lot of these people are in control and they've got an old way and they've got a paradigm and they've got their companies and the things that they do and the way they want to control things and you've seen it happen over time and time and time again with certain leagues popping up and then disappearing and you know it's just like companies being bought and then, you know it's just like it's just this is the this is the human era of greed and wanting to control everything you know we haven't ever even formed like a real union for the players we haven't formed a like a proper league where people have their say and their care and like you know what's going on mm -hmm. it's just like no this is how we're going to do it this is how we do it and this is how we're doing it and then if you don't like it then don't play you know right. and we'll give you this much only this much and that's all you're going to get nobody has agents like so it's really sad <laughs> hello <Horizon>. hello <laughs> <laughs> so we have like there's been no growth because you know, let's face it, like the industry is controlled within the industry. There's no outside industry people that are really coming in. And then when outside industry people come in, they, uh, you know, want to control it. 
you know, they don't want to give up their part of control. So there's a lot right. of control. Okay. So the only way I think that the sport is going to get bigger, and I have a plan to help this. I don't know when the time is right to set in place, but it's it's coming. But I think we as players have to become more sovereign and, uh, you know, not so reliant on these big companies that are that are running the show okay. and or privateer guys that are funding it, you know? Right. So what does that mean, you know? Like, it's hard for a paintball player or a kid to come up the ranks now. So what do we have to do? We have to, we have to, we have to start on those levels, on those bases. We have to give them the information and then build players. We need to build players. There's been a big lack of players for the last five, ten years. I mean, look, the same teams are still winning. You know, wow. same, same pro teams are still winning. There's a couple good teams that have popped into the, uh, the picture. You know, have they won yet? No. And maybe even if they win once, like, that's great. But, you know, it's about winning consecutively and continuously time and time again. Right. You know? And it goes to show, you know, like a team like Impact, man, like, God bless them. They are, like, at the top of their game, you know? And they're winning and winning and winning, you know? And they've got a lot of money funding them. Right. And they've got the opportunity to play and play and play. And now, you know, that's allowing, you know, either new players to see that and, okay, I can aim for that. But it's hard. It's going to be hard to push those guys out, you know? They want to collect their paychecks and play another year. Collect their paycheck and play another year. Right. So there's no organization is pretty much it. There's no organization. There's no organization in the team to say, hey, this guy's starting to slack. Let's get rid of him and pull this new kid in right. and save this money. And we can put this money here. We can buy him. We, you know, there's just like, it's just a few people running the show. Okay. And the few people running the show have their ideas of how they want to run the show. And honestly, it's just, it's kind of boring. Like, that's another thing. I just got pretty bored with watching it, seeing it every year. Oh, now we're going to change this. Now we're going to implement this. And now we're going to change this one. Never once did anybody ever come and say, hey, what do you guys think about this? Right. You know, p players just don't have a voice. And it's sad, you know? I had a voice just because of who I was, but nobody even really listened, you right. know? So it's sad to have a, you know, want something that's better for the, industry as in in terms of industry not the the manufacturers but the industry of the players you know mm -hmm. and uh and no one really cares so it's there's time for a shake-up especially but the shake-up's coming the right. shake-up's inevitable you know and it's the same thing with the global economy you know we're going to shake up here soon you know like there's things there's are, there's rough things lines. brewing and right. and but again like you can't be afraid of it mm -hmm. I mean, you can be afraid of it in the sense that like okay you know you're gonna watch all the news and it's gonna be startling but be prepared for it, you know? And how do you stay prepared in life? You know, and as a player, like I, I know I'm prepared, like we were talking about. I'm prepared, like I know what I have to do in my life. I know how to make money, I know how to live, I know how to be healthy, I know how to breathe, right. I know how to do all these things so that if the um, atom bomb pops, you know, like I can figure out a place where I can go, mm -hmm. you know? Or whatever the situation is, you know? Right, it's just right. like I know what I gotta do. You know, so everybody should just start being prepared, not afraid of it, but be prepared. Interesting, very, very profound as well. And, and again, we were talking about before having having this documented, right, to be able to go back to this conversation. Um, cool. Well, the the final two questions I have for you are are, are fun fun ones, kind of a, a turn. But uh, the first one is if you are stuck on a remote island and you have to bring discography of five different artists. Or bands, who do you bring? Oh, uh, discography's music, yeah. Discography, music, anything uh, artist or band has ever uh, created, and you get to pick five. So like five records, pretty much. No, like five artists and everything that they've created. So oh, so I get the everything. The Beatles, and then you get uh -huh, everything. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice twist too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of music. Mm, that's a good question. I mean, it's hard to say because. The older I'm getting, the more I'm enjoying like more peaceful music, yeah? So like I would have to say uh, some sort of classical uh, classical music, maybe like um, you know, Sebastian Bach. Okay. You know, he's got a lot of a lot of sound. Uh, maybe uh, maybe the Beatles, yeah, just a little uplifting because there's a lot. I'm also going for, see now I'm going for quantity and quality. Right. You know? So, you know, <laughs> one album is one album, you know. There's some people that just only hit one album, but if I, I don't want to listen to that for the rest of my life, I need to have a lot. You so, have to have diversity. So, um, I'm also listening to a lot of, uh, 
I would listen to music that's like, see, music's like, you know, music's this new thing for me. Actually, it's it's very very interesting. It's a new it's a new it's a new study. So there's depth in music. So I'd have to think about somebody who's got a lot of depth in music, like maybe like John Coltrane, you know, because there's just so much into that music. I'm not even that big of a jazz fan, but like. If I could, if I had to sit there on this island forever and just listen to music, I want to be able to explore the music and see right. what's so many layers of the music, yeah. And there's like hidden messages in a lot of this music. So I would say John Coltrane. Okay. So I got Bach. I got um, Beatles. Coltrane. Beatles. Coltrane. Beatles. It was fun. Yeah, I guess Beatles. Yeah. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think of what's on my on my playlist right now. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. It's a good. It's a good first date question. That's a good first date. So we're on a first date. <laughs> I love that. I haven't been on a date for a little bit. Ready to start dating? Okay. So yeah, classical. Um, If people have been listening for I Fleetwood Mac, Fleetwood Mac, Fleetwood okay. Mac, okay, have to be one. Okay, they've got a lot of stuff, and also, come on, come on. I'm just gonna need that. That's that's enough. That's more. Yeah, I I don't like to be too greedy these days. You know, four is enough. Okay, and they got a lot. That's I mean, that's a lot of music. That's a lot of music. Um, the final question is. If you could go on a road trip yeah. with anybody alive or dead, who would you go with? Where would you go? Brilliant question. Brilliant question. Alive or dead? Well, I mean, I'd have to say like one of these great sages or saints. Maybe Jesus, actually. That could be a good one. But we don't know if he was actually even ever alive. So right. let's go with like, um, maybe like Yogananda. Okay. We, and we should just go. Where should we go? I mean, Yogananda. I mean, he speaks English. I speak English. India would be kind of cool, but mm, yeah, maybe me and Yogananda and uh, in like uh, Europe in like in the in his time that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Me and Yogananda in Europe. Europe. Yeah. That's a great That's, region for cro for road tripping as well totally beautiful you know, yeah. and I haven't explored it that much like I would say the US but like I've kind of done a few road trips on the US yeah, yeah. and I don't know if Yogananda's done it already but you know <laughs> I think in 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 Europe in that time was like really romantic yeah right so like right. you know him and Yo Yogananda he's late in like, 1800s he was like no he was in he was in 1900s he okay. was alive in like the uh, 50s 60s uh, maybe okay. 70s even okay I think he passed away maybe around then okay but like maybe we went you know like in the in the 40s or 50s to to Europe you know like and got one of those nice little fiats maybe after just... World War Two. oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about, I forgot about those things. <laughs> I've actually deleted those from my memory so yeah wow so uh, that would be fun yeah in Yogananda totally sure. that's totally it that's it cool all right well good question Ollie thank you so much well, thank you for coming all this distance, and I hope that people enjoy this and get some get a few nuggets of gold out of it. Cool. And bless you on your on your journey and everywhere you're going. Thank you so much. Yeah.